Now imagine yourself to be the leader of your favorite faction. Like I imagine myself sitting on the Archon's throne, backed by two griffins at my side, looking out upon my, my servants and subservience. Now in order to prevent yourself from going insane, sometimes you must daydream and fantasize about what could be or what could have been. You find yourself imagining a time a long, long time ago in a star system far, far away, and you imagine the following. You imagine that there are five great houses fighting IP succession wars in the 1980s. You imagine the great Lucas hegemony, an attempt to control all of sci-fi. Then you imagine a relatively poorly funded, but with a great fan following, Battlestar Galactica. Next you imagine the next great house, the great house of Macross. Then you imagine two smaller houses, one of them called House Robotech with Harmony Gold. Then you imagine House Battle Droids trying to do something no one has tried to do before, combine Dungeons and Dragons and giant fighting robots. The first shots of the IP succession wars were House Lucas attacking House BSG original. And basically, because Luke, Han, and Leia were a love triangle-ish type thing, and BSG had Starbuck, Apollo, and some chicks in it, therefore BSG had to go down, and that was the lawsuit. And did I forget to mention that one of the chicks was Apollo's sister. That's just like Leia was Luke's sister, though at the time that was not public knowledge in the movies yet. After having survived the destruction of the colonies, the Galacta got, got taken out by attorneys. Next, Lucas targeted battle droids. Why? The word droids. But battle droids already had an Omni and had an alt configuration called Battletech. However, that was not the end. After initial salvos between Robotech and Macross, Macross targeted Battletech. For you see, Harmony Gold and Robotech had pulled Capellan trickery and had fooled Battletech into thinking licensing mech imagery IP was legit. For this was not IP theft. It was worse. It was actual Capellan trickery. For the Phalanx was owned by Macross and not Harmony Gold Robotech. The Longbow sacrificed itself so Battletech could live. That saved Battletech, but it was still not over. Many other mechs fell and became the Unseen, but Battletech lived on. This is the story of the first of the fallen, the longbow. So pop the hatch, strap on your neuro helmet, and get yourself ready for a ride. Prepare to unleash hell from a distance, preferably from behind the safety of a mountain. The longbow can turn anything, whether it's a locust, 
or a warrior helicopter or even just a single squad of jump infantry into an absolutely devastating unit. The Longbow is the premier DPS support mech. It's so effective at what it does that even without an armor in, uh, unit in the front to protect it, it still wins a lot. And more so than that, as far as I'm concerned, it is a serious contender for the absolute best mech in the game. From the era of war predating the Star League to the latest Dark Age fad, new variants are constantly being released. But they almost all share one common design philosophy, and that is massive indirect firepower. And though it may seem like just a bigger catapult, it's not quite because a catapult at least tries to fight at close and medium ranges, whereas a longbow doesn't bother. Also, if you use advanced rules such as quirks, the longbow does have anti-aircraft targeting. It doesn't show up in the 3025 or 3050 TROs, but don't let that fool you. It is one of the original, original mechs. So original that it got caught up first in the IP succession wars of the 1980s. And um, my retelling of the the great succession IP wars of the late 70s and mid 80s um, are my personal opinions for entertainment purposes only, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, though I have researched it a bit and seen some pretty weird stuff. If you know weird stuff, you should maybe comment too and maybe we can figure out what happened. Oh, I also forgot uh, the Lucas Hega Mini is also responsible for taking out wicked lasers because their one watt handheld laser looked like a lightsaber. And though the Lucas Hegemony did not successfully take down Battle Droids slash Battletech, it did weaken Battletech. The massive ongoing fire support, almost Longbow-esque, from the Lucas Hegemony enabled Macross to defeat Fossa, and Fossa crumbled. In order to find the for the uh, longbow, you need to f get this um, assault mechs book, and you'll find mech sheets for it, but you will not find it in the thirty twenty five or thirty fifty TRO. Instead, you have to go to uh, future updates that come out, and in here you find the zero W, which is almost the first version of the longbow. That honor actually belongs to the Zero C, but the Zero W just has LRM 20s, LRM 5s, and a single small laser for defense. You actually also find three more longbow sheets, although one of them is actually, I think, a slightly different version of the Zero W, even though it's supposedly the same mech. In the 3055, 3058, uh, mech sheets book but again you won't actually find like pictures of them or anything like that yet and that's because the longbow being that it's uh, a destroyed phalanx from macross at least imagery in the original concept um, has just some IP issues so the pictures of the mechs are kind of missing and they don't show up and then the longbow doesn't show up in the TRO, but it is one of the first original mechs and you can find it. You can find a battle droid and you can find the uh, blue card and orange card versions of it.
actually now gotten to the seven Q, which is the second of the three mechs that are in this booklet. And then there's finally the seven V. The seven Q and the seven V are the 3050s era versions with future tech in them. Whereas the zero W and oh, by the way, there's also costs here, which you don't find it on the Sarna wiki for some reason. Only the 7Q has a cost on the Sarna wiki, but the 0W and the 7V have official listed costs here. Now, when I attempt to calculate the costs myself, um, I only roughly match these costs, so there's something a little bit off in my cost calculations. And here's the uh, 0W and the uh, 7Q. And finally, the 7V, as I have implemented them in my code. Now it's time to go through the various variants that I have implemented. There's only one that I regret, which is the, Artem the Arrow 4 artillery version. It doesn't quite work right because these are supposed to be one-on-one -on -one type sims mostly. And that one requires a partner to tag. This one is the revisionist history art for the Zero C. You can see that it's got two medium lasers in its torsos and a small laser in its head. And then it's got, of course, LRMs. Except that being that it also uses primitive armor, primitive cockpit, and primitive engine, it um, doesn't hold as much equipment and armor, and the armor that it does hold is thinner than you would expect. And in case you're wondering where I got these numbers for for armor and various equipment, I had to reconstruct these from scratch. I don't think there's a mech sheet for it anywhere but this is self-consistent and matches the characteristics of the zero C. Now let's get up to the uh, original Star League version. That design was pure in its intended design, but too often something comes in close and you do need to actually defend yourself. And that's where the 7Q comes in. And this is the canonical art for the LGB 7Q, which is really just a cover up job for the brutal non Aries convention adhering. IP succession wars of the 80s with Macross and Robotech.
The 7Q was so successful that it almost required no modification for a very long time. Centuries, in fact. However, eventually, modifications were in order, and that's where the 7V comes in in the 3050 era. But if you've got all that ammo and all that firepower, including lots of lots and lasers for self-defense or even long-range lasers for offense, what could you possibly do to make the longbow even better? What about twin arrow four artillery? However, this variant doesn't show up until the Word of Blake Jihad era. So it missed out on much of the excitement during the Klan era and the Fedcom Civil War and all those things. So this mech is even more pure in that you don't even have to bother having it on the same map anymore. You can have it many maps away. Going further into the future, backing off a little bit from the Arrow, the Arrow 4 variant, we go back and just add more and more LRMs. This is where the 12C variant comes from. It's almost like the original 0C and 0W in that self-defense is an afterthought. It's just a massive missile boat. However, it doesn't show up until kind of like the Dark Age, and specifically the Dark Age era that's kind of considered current. But this means it has to strip off almost all equipment and, except for case to ram in both LRM-20s and LRM-15s. Almost unbelievable. However, that variant is a little bit weak on the defense side. So that's how, so if you back off a little bit from that and give it a little bit more punch with some ER large lasers, you come up with the next version. And this is where the 12R comes from. It's ER large laser and its LRMs have almost the same range. So it's very well matched. And instead of having two LRM 20s and two LRM 15s, it's basically a Dark Age era mech that just has four LRM-15s and that ER large laser. If you think about it, that's still completely insane. Quad LRM-15s and an ER large laser. Just think about that for a while. Now, there are other variants as well. Here's a dual rotary auto cannon variant, but um, I'm not going to consider that for now. And here's like a super heavy version of the longbow. Although it kind of has some rifleman-ish features too. So how do these different variants do in actual combat? Or at least in computerized simulations of tabletop combat? I did say earlier that the longbow was a serious contender, at least in my books, to be the absolute best mech, and it's for a reason. The 7Q has a win rate over 70%, and the 12C has an amazing 77.5% win rate, and that's including all the assault mechs I've added recently, which include clan assault mechs. The 7Q, that is the standard longbow, does exceptionally well. However, it's 1600 plus battle value. And if you take a look at some of the more primitive ones, the 0C and the 0W do pretty well. In fact, the 0C 
actually slightly edges out the 7Q when battle value corrected, but they all lose out to the 12C, which is just a beast monster, even if battle value corrected. One thing about longbows though, they can actually overheat if you uh, maintain a barrage. So they can get a significant benefit from having a cooling truck nearby, which also has flamers for anti-infantry in case anything happens to come by. So consider a cooling truck as a add-on to like a pair of longbows. Of course, having a cooling truck connected mech would um, dissolve any moral quandaries about firing on a cooling truck connected mech once it starts firing, but that doesn't matter because if you use a cooling truck connected longbow, you're just going to win anyway, and the other side won't be around to tell the story. There is one variant that does particularly poorly in my sims, but I actually don't think it's a real issue, and that's the Arrow 4 variant. And the reason for that is, in my sims, it's kind of hard for me to program the performance of the Arrow 4 correctly, because normally you would have that off map and you would use some locust or a, maybe a raven to go tag something and then you would smack it with those arrow fours but since i can't do that i've just implemented it as a very long range missile that could do up to 20 damage on a hit and the problem with that is for my standard battles i always start my mechs off at 25 comma zero and minus 25 comma zero that is a range of 50 and that really is not allowing the arrow four mech the proper range advantage that it should have. I didn't want to change the conditions of the test between two mechs too much to accommodate the Arrow 4, but at the same time, I still wanted to see how an Arrow 4 mech would do. Um, so if you have any ideas as to how to fix this problem like it's like a theoretical problem uh, please do put them in comments with your ideas because i do want to have arrow 4 in my sims without requiring like a tag so i want to implement it as kind of like a long-range missile perhaps uh, with just line of sight firing um, with like on the same map uh, artillery fire uh, instead of tagging and having it 10 maps off or something. So again, please leave any comments for or ideas. Well, that covers the Sims. But as far as the uh, an interesting feature of the fact that the original model uh, came from a Japanese anime, it means you can actually buy a 172nd model kit for the longbow to use in battle troops or clan troops games. The uh, main issue with that, of course, is that battle troops is inherently a short range game, whereas um, the longbow is inherently a long range mech that does not have the armor and melee bonuses that you can get from an archer. So it's not really suitable for a battle troop scale game unless it's like the target of a capture mission or something like that. So um, I happen to be the guy who added the battle troops rules to the Sarna wiki. And uh, there's no one has added the clan troops rules and I don't have clan troops. So if you happen to have clan troops, could you like please upload or slash enter the rules into uh sarna wiki the same way i put the battle troops rules thanks an interesting mercenary group of note that uses longbows is nelson's longbows it basically is four longbows plus a few other support mechs that are unspecified as far as i can tell and 
some various vehicles and some squads of spotters or specially trained infantry that are effectively spotters for the longbows. And there are some various rules that if you, uh, if you are creating random lances, you exchange any assault mechs for longbows to get around the fact that uh, you want random lances. And now that I've uh, degenerated to not even doing my own research and just spouting off some stuff I see on Sarna, here's a picture of the uh, canonical longbow art again one more time. And then of, of other interesting note is that uh, it came out in the Sorensen Sabres scenario pack, um, which I have just picked up a copy off of eBay to check it out myself. Um, and here's a little more discussion about uh, the IP wars. <laughs>